Welcome to part three in a series of screencasts from LSE Life on discovering different ways to make shorter, smarter revision notes. So in part three, we're going to be looking at index cards. So what we'll cover in this session will be why we make revision notes. We'll go over the information from part one. Then we'll look at index cards in detail, what they are and how they help. And then we'll go through a short guide on how to create them. So remember, for the purposes of these sessions, we're thinking about revision as the process of changing or reworking something in order to improve it. So when you're creating an index card, what you're doing is making revision an active process. So rather than passive revision where we're rereading or highlighting information, we're being active. We're consolidating, summarising and synthesising that information in order to actively understand your course. So we discussed active revision in detail in part one. If you can't remember or need a refresher, pause this session now and go back to part one mind maps. So let's look at index cards in more detail. So the concise summaries we created in part two brought your topic down to a much more usable, succinct version of that much bigger topic. Index cards reduce the information even further into an easier to remember chunk of information. These can then be carried with you, read at any opportunity, and are easier to memorise than pages of notes and ideas. So creating these index cards is really important about being concise. Abbreviations and your own shorthands are absolutely essential here. So how do you create index cards? Well, we've created a template for you. You can download this now from the LSE Life Moodle site where you found this presentation. The following is an example of how you might like to lay out your index cards. So you could start with a summary of the topic in one or two sentences. You can bring in the supporting arguments and the critiques, but again, reducing these down to a few words and image some abbreviations. You can list some key authors, their dates, the theories and concepts, but be selective. You can't include every author, for example. We've given you purposefully a small amount of space. And you can summarise what your main argument is in one or two sentences. If you find when you're creating these index cards that you're still trying to write more and more, then go back to your summary and your mind map, have a look at the information again and try to reselect the information based on some typical exam questions that have been posed in, for your subject in previous years. So now it's your turn. Why not have a go creating your own index card for a module, a subject, a topic, whatever it is that you're revising. You can use the concise summary that you created in part two, or you might feel able to create an index card straight from the mind map you created in part one. It's up to you. And when you've got a few together, if you do know anyone else in your course that's revising the same thing, why not get together with a study buddy and compare what you've done? So remember, for revision as a whole, you should be using multiple sources to compile your revision notes. So past exam questions, your course outlines, your lecture and seminar notes, notes from your readings, so that you're making educated decisions about which information to include in those revision notes. You're consolidating a lot of information together. And remember, a good revision is an active revision. If you can, a study buddy can really help where you can compare mind maps, your summaries, you can swap index cards, or even better, if you can, you can create these things together through online discussion and collaboration. But even if you don't, that's not a problem. What's very important is that you practice, practice, practice. So once you've started to create these notes, use your notes to write some practice essays. Test how well your revision is going and whether these notes are working for you. As we've said in the sessions, this is just one way to do it. And we've given you some example layouts, but you might find when you're doing your practice essays, that actually you need to be able to remember or recall different information. So then you can make some changes. 
And why not do the same timed exam as a buddy in your course and then swap your answers afterwards for feedback? Again, you could use Microsoft Teams or Google Docs for this if you can't be together.